Kia ora whanau and welcome to another episode of Get a Job and Get Healthy with Costas Enterprises. I am your host Alex Costas and today we are going to talk a little bit more on the CV type things. Um, one of the things we're going to be talking about is basically what skills you should uh, always have in either your CV or your cover letter. Now these are the sorts of skills that you should mention or bring up uh, if possible uh, because they're not usually asked for but they're really really solid uh, skills that you can sort of show uh, for other things like future jobs opportunities so this will probably be quite a, a short podcast episode uh, at the same time, I do encourage you to pop along to my website. I've completely redesigned the website now, and both my interview skills and also my uh, CV and cover letter skills are now all under uh, recruitment advice. Uh, I ask that you pop along to my website and actually have a look at it uh, all the details are actually in the show notes so feel free to click through to that um, I have previously talked about other skills and all that sort of stuff before uh, but with this particular episode I've just recently done a couple of CVs for people and I thought I'd just let you guys know just some common ones that I see that everyone should really have in their CV or their cover letter um, and, and I hope to cover those off in this episode so first and foremost, uh, usually quite a good skill to have is excellent communication skills, both oral and written. Um, some people say verbal and, you know, written. Uh, you can use either one, basically. Uh, now, you might be going, well, hang on, what, what do you mean by excellent communication skills? What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is if you're able to hold a sentence with a customer or with a uh, potential internal or external stakeholder, okay, that is what I'm talking about. So on that, you can also cover off one of the other ones we will talk about a little bit later about network relationship uh, management. But in this instance, a really, really great thing is you may get asked a question about can you uh, clearly communicate well with others, especially if you are dealing with anything like a call center or customer facing, where you may be required to uh, respond to a customer, they may ask you about your communication skills. So a really, really helpful answer, um, if you can somehow work it in, uh, is if you can define what effective communication is or, or what excellent communication is now if you do find a way to slip this in it will make you sound amazing so the actual definition of excellent communication sk skills now for this I will be consolidating it a little bit uh, but if you can work into the conversation or uh, so in an interview or if you can work into your CV uh, or your cover letter specifically your cover letter more than your CV because um, with your CV you just have to say excellent communication skills but with your cover letter or in an interview you may want to say something like well I believe excellent communication skills are what I do because I take uh, information that is given to me, I break down any barriers uh, that I find, uh, this could be something like jargon or it could be um, information that our original users do not need um, or it could be technical information, I'm just giving you examples here obviously. Um, and then after taking that information I consolidate the information and then translate it into a way that people can actually understand uh, so that anybody could pick up the information um, and learn exactly what it is that we're trying to do. So effectively that is what effective communication is. Effective communication is, be, is having the ability to take a piece of language, break it down, remove the barriers and then turn it into simple plain 
uh, language that anybody could understand. So that's that's the basics of communication. Now, if you are applying for a job where you might have something like business writing, uh, you want to make sure that when you're talking about your effective communication that you uh, or your excellent communication skills, that you're able to basically mention that you can break the language down uh, into simple English, for example, uh, meaning that anybody can pick it up from ages zero to 99 and know what it is that you're talking about. Now, this particular uh, type of writing skills, uh, if you are going to be doing anything like a business analyst type role where you have to prepare papers or, or memos, um, that's when this sort of thing comes in very, very handy. And you can use the same sort of example we talked about before, where you talk about getting some information, breaking down the barriers, and then basically putting just what the person needs on paper. Now, the next one we're going to go is um, being flexible and adaptable. Now, this can be two separate categories, or you can put them in the same one. I usually try to put it in the same one if I'm applying for a job, because it's effectively giving the uh, employer that you're applying for um the opportunity for you to explain both being flexible and also being adaptable they are two separate things even though they sound the same uh, being flexible means that you can maybe do something at the drop of a hat uh, maybe a big contract's come in and you've been pulled off doing your current work to also assist with this so that's being flexible being able to go yeah i can do that cool um, and the adaptable part is being able to take on a job and then do something else, okay, within that role, for example. So say, for example, um, as we just use the example that someone comes to you with a whole lot of work that you've got to do um, and you're flexible to say, yes, I can do it, I can do it fine, um, you work it into your time schedule, but the ability of being adaptable is you going, oh, this is actually something I haven't done before, but I am able to do it because I recognize these key factors um, and this is the way that I can do it because of those key factors, for example. So it's just basically saying, uh, when you say you're flexible and adaptable, it basically says that you can do anything um, that is given to you um, and that even if it's given to you at a moment's notice, that you are able to take that on. Okay, and when an employer sees that you're flexible and adaptable, uh, and you can prove it, they they will they will see you and go, okay, I want this person working for me. Even though it is one of those it is one of those skills that people just sort of think is a throwaway skill. If you can put meaning behind it because of something that you've done, then that is very very important because that will back up quite a few other skills, and it can also be slotted into quite a few different. Uh, questions that may ask you um, if you say you know I'm flexible and uh, adaptable to uh, most team environments that can also mean what we're going to talk about next which is the ability to work independently or as part of a team now this is very important if you are depending on whether or not you are working for yourself um, uh, or if you are working as part of a larger team uh, or as well as a normal team if you say that you have an ability to work independently, it is basically you saying, look, you can give me the work, I can figure it out and I can do it myself. Um, and on the flip side of that, the ability to work as well as part of a team means that you also can understand the team's vision uh, and where they need to be and we, what part you need to play as a part of that team to make sure that your team meets its goal. And that's just big fancy words for you being able to say, look, I can work with this person, or if you want me to work on my own, I can. Which is really, really handy. Um, time management skills is a really, really good um, skill to have in your CV. But only if you actually have them. An employer will know very, very quickly if you do not have time management skills, so don't even bother putting it in. If you're, uh, if you're a little bit lost and you don't stick to a, to a schedule and you're not very good at that, 
mark that down as one of your weaknesses and try to work on it. But at the same time, don't say that you've got time management skills if you don't have time management skills. Um, one of the other things that people talk about as well as problem solving skills, it's the same same instance. If you say that you've got problem solving skills, um, it basically means that you can look at a situation and go, okay, what is happening here? What do I need to do? How would I solve this problem that's just appeared? And so you can sort of look at those as well. Um, and problem solving skills is a great thing to have, especially if you are looking at a sort of, a, as I said before, sort of a business analyst type role. Uh, because you're basically giving problems and you have to provide solutions based on information that you've got. Um, and if you've been worked in a, in a sort of area like that before, or even if you've just worked, let's face it, you could work on a factory floor and still have problem solving skills because you could see that there might be a problem in the way that your production line is doing something. And because you know of how to do a certain thing, it might help the whole production line be a lot faster. So problem solving skills can be applied to any type of job um, as long as you actually have those skills and are able to sort of take a step back and go, oh, actually, if we did this, this would be better for the team or this would be better for the group or this would be better for myself, then that counts as well as problem solving skills. Um, now, we talked about four very, very quickly excellent networking and relationship management skills now um you might be like well, what do you mean alex what is a network relationship and what is the difference between network relationship as well as relationship management skills well let's put it this way uh a lot of buzzwords uh, are put in these skills and one of them is relationship management skills or networking relationship management skills or even network relationship skills. You can use a combination of any three of those. Um, but effectively what you're saying when you say that you've got networking skills or you've got relationship management skills or you've got networking relationship management skills is basically you are saying to the employer that you understand that there are lines of communications within a different network and that network can be within a team it can be within a greater organization it can also be external organizations that also deal with your organization meaning um, another way to, to look at this is the famous I work with good internal and external stakeholders uh, now that is basically a very wafty way of saying that you work with people both within the organization and people with out of the organization um, and that could be consultating on a specific thing um, but if you can show that you've got excellent networking skills and networking skills would literally be um, you could use an example of you uh, sending an email to all of the uh, external contracts that you manage um, and uh, giving them an update of what it is that you in your particular role are doing um, that may affect them. That counts as excellent networking skills um, and excellent relationship management skills as well. Uh, another one that's really, really good is also, and this is only if you are actually quite good at it, um, is to say that you're proficient in the Microsoft Office suite. Now again, I preface this by saying make sure that you actually are proficient in Microsoft Office. So for example, if you don't know how to use Word or Excel, you might want to jump on a course and learn. But do not say that you have good working, uh, uh, that you have good proficiency in Microsoft Office suite if you don't know how to use Word, Excel, Outlook. Uh, basically those are your three main ones um, if you do know those three you can sort of claim that you do know the Microsoft Office suite um, if you have extra alternative um, skills and things like PowerPoint or Microsoft Access um, those also count as well but what I would do is if you do have access uh, if you do have proficiency in Microsoft Access or something like Power BI do mention that because those aren't programs that are used by a lot of organizations but the ones that do use those 
those programs and are looking to hire you will want to know more about your um, profici proficiency with those uh, Microsoft Office Suite products as well. Now, you don't have to just stick it to Microsoft Office products. You can say that you are very computer literate as well. Um, and that is perfectly fine. And there's nothing wrong with saying that as well. Um, same as if you're using anything like Visio. Um, I know for a lot of people like accountants um, that are wanting to apply for accounting type jobs um, or get into the financial sector, if you've got any um, experience with things like MYOB or Xero, well, you will want to mention that you do actually have proficiency in those actual subjects as well, uh, programs as well. Um, and another one that's quite good to have is also the ability to be self-motivated um, or motivate team members. So this is really, really good, especially if you are going for sort of a 2IC or even a, a leadership type role or a management type role. Um, on the same vein of that, if you have management experience and you're wanting to mention that, you will want to say that you do have uh, management um, experience. And that can be things like learning how to delegate um, and, and also being able to delegate to other people uh, as well as manage other people within a team. Uh, all those skills themselves will have their own things. Now, as I said, with this particular podcast episode, we are only talking about skills that you could possibly put in there as an aside to what they actually want. So as I've talked about in previous podcast episodes and also as you'll read on my blog, uh, the other thing that I talk about is if you are applying for a job, make sure that all of your skills and uh, all of the other skills that are listed in the job description for the job that you're applying for and the um, uh, not only in the cover letter but also in the CV as well. And you can work those in, in some instances as well. Overall, though, that, that's that's the biggest amount of skills that you can do uh, in addition to the skills that they are actually looking for. So nine times out of ten, they will have a list of about six to seven skills. And if you can sort of demonstrate at least four of them, um, then, you know, you're, you're in a good space. Uh, if you can write those four in your actual CV or cover letter as well, uh, that will help you. Now, that is not to say that not you do not need every single skill listed in your CV um, or mention them in your uh, interview questions. But if you've got sort of, if you try to focus on the ones that they have mentioned that they are actually looking for, uh, or alternatively, the ones that they say are nice to have, uh, then you would want to notice those down so that you can actually respond to those should you get an interview, which I hope you all do. Off the top of my head, those are the only skills that I can think of that would be really, really helpful, regardless of what you're applying for. Um, they, they're just really, really handy to have in your actual um, in your wheelhouse. Uh, but as I said, Make sure that that is only if you have those skills. So, for example, not everyone has time management skills, um, but at the same time, if you do have time management skills, do mention it. Don't sit back. Um, one thing that New Zealanders have an issue with is uh, the ability for us to sort of up ourselves and to say, you know, we're really, really great. We have a thing called the tall poppy syndrome, uh, which basically means that um, as Kiwis, we don't actually like saying, hey, look, I did really well at that particular thing. And of course, when you are applying for a job, especially in New Zealand, you will get asked, hey, what are you good at? And if your response is, uh, I don't know, that thing, then you can imagine they're not going to pick you over someone else. I mean, they may do, but that depends on how many people have actually applied for the job. But other than that, um, I can't think of any at the moment. I will probably do an updated version of this list um, at some point in time, once I, you know, 
have a bit more time and I know a little bit more about other changing environments as well. Because And this is, of course, usually specific to New Zealand, but can be applied to some other countries as well. But until next time, I want to say thank you very much for listening. As I said, I know it's been a very short episode, uh, but I do appreciate you all uh, listening in. Uh, please feel free to get in touch with me uh, at Don Costas, that's D-O-N for Nike, C-O-S-T-A-S at gmail.com. Uh, so that's uh, my personal email. Feel free to drop me a line. As I said, do pop along to my website. Uh, you're more than welcome to. I promise I will get back onto the passive income stuff in the next couple of days. Um, you may not see for, hear from me next week uh, because I'm actually going to be away on leave. Uh, but I will try to put out a podcast episode. Um, but until next time, thank you very much for listening and have a great day. Good luck to you. Bye.